Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Millennium Discourses with Sajjad Ayyub and Sheikh Ibrahim Skaterman. Today we're discussing Discourse 15, Yearning. We're told that whatever is good is from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that what is bad is from ourselves. Isn't that a contradicting contradiction that we've been talking about, that everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I think the best way to understand this, uh, Sajjad Saab, is to is to say that um, fundamentally, um, uh, our our experience of of um, of badness, if you like, is in a sense our own construct. I mean, certainly this is true for um, uh, the experience of things that we have an issue with in our lives. Um, we, um, uh, you know, there's, um, if, if you look at any, per, any person with a victim narrative, uh, you, know, this, um, you know, I've been so done in, um, I've been ill-treated by somebody. Um, although that's true, uh, so let's say, for instance, um, uh, you you do me in in a business deal, for example, and mm-hmm. I then so you see now you can't trust this person, and you also can't trust people in business deals, because I've been done in, um, uh, and I extrapolate from that what instance of of uh, of uh, bad experience, but actually therefore there's badness in the world. And therefore, it's a short hop from that, that the world is bad. Now, what one has to understand is that any experience of victimhood is always choosing to zoom in on on a microcosm of the whole picture, which then basically produces a completely distorted view. Um, For me to say that I've been done in um, isn't true for my whole experience. In fact, my whole experience, if every single person that I'd ever encountered in my life had done me in, I would not be alive. I mean, this would not be physically possible because, you know, there was at least a whole sort of army of caring adults that sort of, you know, nurtured me through my, my early years that made it possible for me to be alive. If they didn't do that, I'd be dead. So, so it isn't true that the world cannot be trusted and that people cannot be trusted. It isn't true that I have been done in. It is true that I've received in excess of my due. And for me to carry a narrative that I've been done in then takes one instance of bad experience and makes that the truth. And and by making the one instance the truth, I'm now produced. So my experience of evil, my experience of badness is in a sense um, not seeing things in context. It's not seeing things as they are. It's taking the, 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 the dot of catastrophe and making that the reality. Um, so then the question still is, well, is that, does that mean to say that the dot of catastrophe isn't catastrophe? Well, this now becomes a question of perspective because, you know, what makes a really good novel a good novel is because it's got suspense. And what makes suspense is that there's an, at least an apparent uh, possibility of disaster. If that wasn't there, then you, there wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a good story. So one way of looking at how Allah's kind of created the, all of us, and in fact, the whole universe, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a massive um, uh, sort of encyclopedic sort of set of stories. It's, it's an it's a incredible storytelling. And it's intriguing stories, it's exciting stories, it's adventurous stories, but it's stories that will always end up with a happy ending because that's his nature. So in other words, in the final analysis, all things will be good because they are his things. You know, we might have in the intervening period some distress, but you know, all will will end well. All, all stories will come, you, you know, like if something doesn't end, it is not well. It's like, 
if you, <clears throat> I forget what they call there's a musical term for this. If you if you if you uh, it, you, you you have to play a, a sort of a set of notes that complete the sequence. Otherwise, it feels like the thing ruptured. It, it doesn't it doesn't finish. You know, it's like like a story that doesn't finish isn't a satisfying story. Stories have to finish. There has to be a sense of resolution. Now he's the great storyteller. Teller. So all his stories will come to resolution. All his stories will finish. You know, which which means to say all his all his stories will end well. You know, and if they don't, if it's not yet well, it's not yet the end. So 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 all that ends ends well by definition because then it doesn't have an aftertaste. There's not something that still needs to be resolved. It's done. It's finished. That's his nature. His nature is the resolver, the one who will finish the stories. He's the great storyteller. So all things will be, and our perspective that things are not well are a perspective, perspective that's always based on a, a, a subset of the plot. You know, that, 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 that we, we make the subset, we make the small point the story. And uh, so, and so, so when, we see, when we see bad, it is because we have limited our vision to only a subset of the story. We're not seeing the whole story. If you pan out in the absolute fullness of time, you will see that all stories end well. Because all stories will end. That's his promise. There'll be a final account. There'll be a final ending. All stories will end. They won't have an aftertaste. They'll be resolved. I'm getting goosebumps. Mm. So you're, so you're describing mankind as being in a state of being incomplete or just feeling incomplete. Could you expand on that? Complete. <clears throat> um, we, we, uh, it's not, it's not, we don't just feel incomplete. We are made inadequate. Um, how do I know I'm inadequate? Well, if somebody just held my nose, for uh, two minutes, um, I would um, I'd lose consciousness. I, I, I am inadequate. I'm not self-sustaining. I'm completely dependent on other than me. Um, um, in, in the, there's, 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 um, there's every single aspect of my being has come from other than, there's nothing about me which is self-sufficient. Um, and any human being's claim to self-sufficiency is 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 not only false but it's a huge it's an it's it's almost gobsmacking arrogance you, know, you are not self-sufficient you are inadequate you know um um the, the the point is what is the purpose of that inadequacy well the purpose of that inadequacy, for me, the purpose of that inadequacy is to, is to, is the, is the realization that, that, that he, he is the provider, that, the, that there's a, the, <clears throat> there's a sense of completeness, which is only possible because he is there. I cannot actually, it's, so how do I requite my sense of inadequacy? How do I, how do I, my sense of vulnerability that's consistent with a sense of inadequacy. How do I make it better? How do I fix it? Well, actually, it's not fixable because um, it's not up to me. You know, we say Allah's outwardly manifest, eh? which means wherever you look is the face of Allah. So, so in other words, he, the world that faces you, the outward world that faces you, is is His face. It's what's talking to you, and and. What is there that you're made up of that hasn't come from there, from other than you? You know, so so everything that you need comes from him. Yeah. Um, uh, we we only have we only have a, there's only one choice. We can either allow him to give it to us, or we can think we're so stupid that we can actually manage the affair to get it for ourselves. So we can either be lovers that experience a deep sense of satisfaction and gratitude because we have been given, or we can be um, uh, muggers and take from the world what we want. 
Um, but you know, we have to understand that uh, that uh, the, you know, just like human beings don't abide a mugger, so the universe doesn't abide a mugger. You can you carry on taking for long enough, you're picking a fight you're not going to win. So our inadequacy is absolutely part of the story. It isn't an illusion. It's not something that we just feel. It is something that is actually how we're designed to be. We're designed to be inadequate so that we can be in awe of the one who's the great provider and the great protector. Otherwise, our Rahman and Rahim would be nonsense. How can you say, you know, what mercy, what beneficence? What do you mean? I'm self-sufficient. No, it is precisely because you recognize that you're not self-sufficient, that you recognize the magnificence of the protection and the magnanimity that's being aimed at you. Why do we feel separate? And are you saying that separation is an illusion? Hmm. Well, from one point of view, de facto separation is an illusion. I mean, because um, uh, for the same logic that we, we just discussed, you, if you stopped sort of intimately interacting with what isn't you on an ongoing basis, you would die within seconds, well, within minutes at least. You know, if we held your mouth closed and your nose closed for a very short period of time, you would be dead. So we, we really do need to interact on an ongoing basis. We need to, you know, that is, um, that is our nature. We, uh, 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 we you know, um, we don't exist separately from the world. And um, a metaphor for this, I might have mentioned it here before, but it's a very useful metaphor. If you think about a, uh, a, an eddy in a stream, so if you're watching a stream and there's, you know, that causes a disturbance. Uh, there's the front of the rock, you know, the front where the, 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 the water hits the rock, there's a ripple and then there's a ripple around it. So you can, you can, so that you get that place where there's a ripple in the stream, you can almost delineate, you can say that's got a form, it's got a shape. And, and it's true, it does have a shape. But that that shape does not exist independently of the stream. You know, that for, I mean, if this river, if the stream stopped flowing, that shape wouldn't be there. That shape only exists because there's an ongoing uh, 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 input. There's there's a throughput of water over this rock. I mean, there's water that comes towards the rock, hits the rock, flows over the rock, and goes. Over. It's that throughput that produces the shape of this 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 vortex in in the stream. You too are a vortex. You're a shape that's being produced by dramatic of other than you through you. And if that flow stopped, you wouldn't be there. You know, so, so this idea that you exist separately is clearly nonsense because it's impossible to exist separately from what isn't you. It is exactly what you're informed of. It's what, it's what you're constituted by. You know, you, you don't exist separately. So how is it that we have this experience that we exist separately? Because we do. It's, you know, <clears throat> the experience that we learn separate, that, live, uh, that we exist separately from the world around us is, is a learned experience. I mean, I'm absolutely convinced it's something that we get taught. All that you have to do is look into the eyes of a newborn and you recognize that this being is, is, is like in soup. They, they, they're not a, a lot different from what they were in the amniotic fluid of their mother. You know, a, 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 you know, a noodle floating around in soup. You know, what's noodle, what's soup? Well, that's very difficult to define because the, the soup is in the noodle and the noodle is in the soup. Kind of like, you know, it's like, and so when they're just born, they have that experience. You can see they can't even see properly. You can see they're looking into soup. They kind of, they can't distinguish forms. It's only after a couple of weeks that you can start see that now they're focusing. They can start recognizing shape. So we come into the world as a noodle in soup, you know, not separate from the world around us. So how then do we get this experience eventually of being discrete beings that stand completely separately from the world? Well, that is, we get taught that. We get taught that experience. We get taught to become human beings. 
you know, um, we, uh, we, we get taught language. And what the first permissible language? The first permissible language is the separation between subject and object. What does that mean? The self and the other are separate. They're not the same. Self and world is separate. We learn to identify with our boundaries. We learn that there's a place where, where I stop and the world begins. You know, there's a, it's not continuous. And what happens as we get older is that it's made thicker and thicker. But what you have to understand about those boundaries is that those boundaries are, they're not actually there. They're descriptions of what's there. You know, so, so we, um, we, we, we learn that, uh, um, you know, I've, um, I have this nationality and I, you know, I, I, I have this color eyes and I have, you know, we identify all of these things, this whole collage of things that uh, we, we identify with as ourselves. And each one of those things actually, we spoke about this before, each one of those things that we learn about who we, th we think we are actually says more about what we're not than what about what we are. You know, if, if I say, <clears throat> my name is Ibrahim, it means it's not Sajjad or Fred. Uh, uh, in other words, there's a whole universe of possible names that get excluded by me claiming the one name. So I'm saying more about what I'm not than what about I am when I say I'm Ibrahim. Or when I say I'm 62 years old, it means I'm not 75 or 19. You know, God forbid I should be 19 again. You know, so, so I exclude a whole universe of everything you say about yourself says infinitely more about what you're not than about what you are. They are all statements of exclusion. They're statements of separation. And that total body of statements of separation then give you this construct of your idea that you are, of your identity, of, your, of who you are, as opposed to what everything else is, your separateness from the world. You know? But th those are all constructs. You know, this, this being that soup is still there. It's just stuck in a cage. It's stuck in a cage of definitions and description. Now, the point is that, that <clears throat> this process whereby we get pulled out of the world and produce the sense of existing separately from the world is part of the human story. It's been made to be like that. It is our fitra to be separated and alienated. It is our fitra to become increasingly aware of our vulnerability and our, our, our uh, conditioned and conditional nature. You know, that's why? so that we can deliberately find our way back home again. You know, so, we get, so it's like we get hidden from ourselves and from the, how things are, so that we can find how things are, discover who we are. You know, that's, uh, that's, that, and that's our unique story. That's, exact, that's why human beings have been made. He made us to go into the world, to leave the garden, and to aspire to come back to the garden. You know, the idyllic state. The natural state that's surely what the garden implies you know the, the state where where no clothing is required you know there's clothing is that which separates you from the world literally it puts a garment between your your being and the world well there's a point where we will go back to that state where this same as you're not separate from <clears throat> It seems as if you're saying well, that only by understanding our own smallness can we understand our creator's greatness. I, 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 yeah, I think that is right. So um, if, he, um, if he created to be known, uh, that is the purpose of creation, then um, uh, how do you... Um, uh, uh, so, so, uh, what's what's his ex you know? How does he describe himself in the Quran? He describes himself as the as the greatest. He describes himself as the most wise. He describes all of these things. I mean, how how how, how do you really know that that is? How can you affirm that? Attest to that? 
if you if you i mean if, if i'm 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 also the great uh um uh you know so it, it requires my a decry how how can i how can i affirm that he is um uh the uh, the most wise in the first instance by recognizing the, the my own limitation of the limitation of my intelligence how can i affirm that he is the greatest by recognizing and affirming my smallness how do I how do I affirm that he is the most compassionate by recognizing the fact that in fact I'm not, you know? How do I recognize that he's the generous by recognizing the fact that no matter how generous I think I am, there'll still be moments that I in in every instance it is my my incapacity that puts me that 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 constructs the viewing platform from which I can regard his nature. You know, um, I can't affirm the greatness of his nature if I'm the same as him. So the viewing platform has to be a smaller place. But what's also true about this, of course, is that there's nowhere where he isn't. I mean, he said, so in terms of my own inward experience, this thing that's on this platform looking out at the world, you know, he so, said, well, what's, what's actually the um the essence of that inward experience is is him because he said so he's told me that he's closer to me than my jugular vein so he's actually the most intimate to me he's closer he's closer to me than me in other words i am a device whereby he looks at himself i'm a carefully constructed device of inadequacy it's an incredible incredibly stupendous feat you know that he produces this device called inadequacy so that he can look through that device and see how extraordinary he is. So in that sense, we are, we are truly the most beloved. I mean, we are in our, in our, in our meanness and our, 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 our sort of, um, I'll put a kind of, uh, 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 sort of, uh, uh, demeaned lowly status of being the one constructed from clay you know that uh, this uh, this this being of dirt and mud has been chosen to be the the uh, scope the viewing platform from which he can regard himself uh, so um uh, you know let's um that is the most extraordinary, uh, overwhelming uh, sort of um, implication of all of this. Mm. You know, he's, uh, we truly are immensely blessed creatures. I mean, we, um, there's uh, that um, that this thing that is so low and and is so broken and is so inadequate is precisely the thing that he uses to demonstrate just how extraordinary he is. Yeah. Fascinating. We're here, not here to succeed at the project of our lives. That seems to go against the grain of every mo motivational and self-help speech I've ever heard. Why do you say this? I'm, uh... I mean, it depends on how, I mean, that, that statement could be seen either as true or false, depending on how you're looking at it. First of all, um, to, um, we're, we're here to see that life works. We're, we're here to see that life works. We're not here to make life work. Part of really recognizing that life works is that we witness our own inadequacy. Uh, so our failure is part of the story. So I want to, I'd like to give you an example of something I've just been reminded of recently again. It's the story of John Paul Getty. 
you know, this, this really wealthy uh, American businessman. Um, so so uh, one could ask, well, you know, was that life, could you do The man died at one point, the richest man in the world. He died completely alone. He'd been abandoned by his entire family because he was such a misanthrope. You know, um, uh, 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 one suicide, one, one catatonic uh, drug dependent. I'm literally the guy that overdosed and he became catatonic. There was, there's not a single good story. The only, there's a single grandson who became a composer. The rest of them, that wealth destroyed them. Now, was that a life of success or a failure? Well, I think it is a failure. So, so the things that we, we think we're, we're here to achieve things and succeed, well, we're, you're wrong. In fact, our very arrogance to claim that we are to achieve things and succeed is the very thing that eventually crucifies our lives for us. It's exactly what happened. Yeah, look at the lives of the privilege. You know, and, 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 and they never, that story never ends in, uh, you know, happily. I mean, your own royal family in the UK is a case in point. It's, it's uh, you know, all the privilege and, and, and you know, have horrible uh, lives. And with compassion, no, nobody would walk. On that note, thank you for joining us. And we look forward to speaking again. Thank you again. Salaam alaikum.